Hello everyone, my name is Aditya and today we will be taking a look at how to use Oracle integration as a tool with Gen AI agents. Um, a little bit of background on the AI agent platform. Um, it combines the power of an LLM uh, and also gives you the ability to invoke uh, multiple tools to orchestrate um, your conversations. Um, there, the key features include a simple agent setup, so it's all managed by Oracle. Um, you just you know, click a button and it spin up the agent uh, and the LLM behind it. Um, tool orchestration, you have options of multiple tools, which I have it on the next slide. I can explain a bit more there. Um, there's a multi-turn chat experience. Um, there's context retention. You can provide custom instructions, and it's, of course, scalable and secure. Some of the tools included with the OCI AI agent platform are as follows. Number one is the SQL tool, where you can communicate with a database using natural language, which would then be converted into a SQL query and then um, returned the response back in natural language. Uh, the RAG tool, which can be used to create knowledge bases and then search documents based on um, user queries, uh, the agent tool to invoke another agent, um, the custom function calling tool to write functions in Java or Python and you know invoke those, um, and then today's topic, which is the custom API endpoint calling tool, uh, where you can invoke REST APIs. And um, basically what we're going to do today in this demo is we're going to use the API calling tool to invoke an Oracle integration endpoint. Um, and then you'll see, you know, this unlocks you know, endless possibilities. Uh, before the agent can communicate with the REST API, there's a little bit of network infrastructure um, and also the vault that needs to be stood up. Um, so what you need is a VCN, uh, within the VCN, a private subnet um, and uh, you need to have a NAT gateway so that um, the requests coming from the agent uh, go through that to communicate with the integration instance in this case, uh, but also the third party APIs or any APIs in general, right? Um, the vault is used to store um, things like the password, like if you're using basic auth, you know, you would store the password there. Or if it is um, OAuth, then you can store the client secret in the vault. When you create a tool, um, it asks you to select the VCN and the subnet and um, other information. But when you click create, what it really does in the back is it creates a private endpoint into the private subnet. Um, and then from there, uh, it can then access the NAT gateway and then you know talk to all these APIs. And during runtime, the agent then invokes the vault to get the secret, um, it goes via the private endpoint NAT gateway to invoke the integration API. Um, and the use case for the demo in this video is pretty straightforward. We're just imagining that um, they were looking to get the order shipment details, uh, but this information is either in a private database or a private API, which is either on-prem or on another cloud. Right? If it's public, Gen AI agent can use the API calling tool to just directly talk to the API. Uh, but in these scenarios where you have private, you know, endpoints, uh, you can use Oracle integration to broker the communication between the two. And then I have another integration that can then take those details, create a CSV file, and then send that out as an attachment to the user. So those are the two integration calls that we will be seeing today in this video. Okay, so before I run my demo, let's take a look at some of the prerequisites that I set up. You need a VCN, so let me just show you the setup in my VCN. I have a gateway, um, I have a NAT gateway, um, and then a private subnet. And inside the private subnet, in the route table, I have the outgoing traffic, all of the traffic going through the NAT gateway. Um, next is the vault, and inside the vault I have created a master encryption key. Um, and then under secrets um, is where you can then go ahead and create a secret um, and use the same master encryption key that you just created before. And in manual secret generation under plain text, you can paste the either the password if you're using basic auth 
um, or if you're using OAuth, you can paste the client secret here. Okay, so all of the prerequisites that I just showed and talked about are mentioned right here um, in the documentation. Um, but some things that I didn't show was the IAM policy, um, and these policies are required. So when you create the tool, uh, the agent or that page can load the list of VCN subnets um, and the vault uh, secrets, right? So um, just, yeah, go through these, add the right policies, um, and then we're all set. Next, coming to the agent. So I already have one created, but let's create a tool together. So when you click on create tool, you see all the options that I discussed earlier. Um, the custom tool is where you have the, both the options for the function calling um, or the API endpoint calling. And in this case, we're gonna do this. Um, let me just name this and um, provide a description. And um, as we do that, the next step is to give an API schema. Now. To get this, you need to go into the integration instance. Um, here are the list of my integrations, and this is the one I want to call. And if I click on Run, this will give me an option to see the endpoint metadata. And under that, I have an open API specification. Um, so all you need to do is just copy, um, come over here, paste what you just copied. And um, there's just three things we need to add. Uh, number one is the uh, description on the info level. So here, I'll add a description. Um, and then a description at the API level, right? So this is a get API, so I'll add a description here. And the last thing is to add a description for the parameter. In this case, order shipment ID, so I added a description here. Um, next, you choose authentication type. Uh, for this demo, I'm doing IDCS, so I'll choose IDCS, and then um, select your domain. In this case, um, it's the default domain. Uh, give it a client ID. For the secret, it's going to ask which client secret uh, in my vault, right? So you can see um, these are the secret names, and then in, basically, that's the vault name. Um, so in this case, um, it's in the OIC vault PHX. Yeah, and then the next step is to put the scope in. And uh, this is where it's going to ask you for the VCN, right? So this is my VCN, and I'm selecting private subnet because I have the NAT gateway and all that infrastructure created. And that's it. And then you click Create Tool, and this will start creating it. Um, and then if you have multiple tools, you can have routing instructions so that it makes the agent's life a little bit easier to understand uh, when to call which tool. Um, in this case, for the shipping order information, um, I just added a line, you know, when asked about the status of a shipping order, then, you know, just call this tool. Okay, now, so let's launch the chat and bring it all together. So I asked if it can check the shipment status of this order number, and it returned back um, some details. Now, if I do view here, and um, in the traces, you'll be able to see which tool it called and um, what the response was, right? So in this case, you'll see it's calling the get shipment info um, API, and then uh, it got this response back, um, and then it converted this body into a more human readable statement. Um, next, I have another integration that takes this information, creates a CSV file, um, and then sends it out as an attachment in an email. Um, so I asked this, and as we can see here, it did invoke the email shipment information API. Um, and uh, let me just show you what it returns back. So this is the email that I got. Um, and then if I do preview, you'll be able to see the order shipment ID, status, um, date, um, you know, the warehouse location, and the shipment speed. Uh, matching whatever information I had here. Um, and if I go to the integration instance, I'll be able to see um, all the integrations being invoked um, by that AI agent. Coming back to the slides, um, and the reason why this unlocks endless possibilities is because Oracle integration is not just an integration tool, but it is a complete business automation platform.
with the tool you get 100 plus adapters adapters into all sorts of various systems um, you know SaaS systems non SaaS systems on-prem systems um, as well as uh, you know a lot of the productivity and social connectivity adapters like sending an SMS on something happened or um, sending a slack message to someone based on some information um, and also you know, connectivity to multiple databases and the whole multi-cloud architecture, right? We have adapters into Azure, into AWS, um, and all sorts of other clouds as well, Google included. Um, this gives you the option to not only invoke REST, but also SOAP APIs, which currently from this API calling tool, SOAP invokes is not possible, um, but Oracle integration can invoke SOAP APIs um, and some of the Fusion and older um, applications still have uh, some APIs which are SOAP based. And um, to call those, you know, you can use Oracle integration to expose a REST API, uh, which is called from the Gen AI agent, but then the integration itself invokes the SOAP endpoint, right? Um, also, multi private APIs and multi cloud, which I, you know, explained and we saw during this demo. Um, and then all sorts of file handling, right? Wherever files are stored, you know, object storage, um, you know, SFTP servers, file share sites. Uh, Oracle integration can handle and get files from all of these locations. If there are systems which don't have APIs, you can use the robotic process automation feature, uh, which then goes and interacts with the UI uh, to pull or enter information in. Um, of course, we need to be um, cautious of the timeouts, so uh, making it in an asynchronous call uh, makes much more sense. Um, it also has the B2B um, translate actions, so if you're trying to pull out a field from a file, from a B2B EDI file, you can use Oracle integration and then, you know, send the data back to uh, the end user. Um, approval flows, of course, if there's any sort of action required by some human, uh, you can assign tasks and you can do all sorts of things using Oracle integrations, a process automation feature. Um, and then, you know, all of that is can be invoked from a REST API. Um, and then the decision service, right? Complex decisions, you can build decision trees. Um, and then all of that, that can be exposed as a REST API called from Gen AI agent. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. This was just to show the art of possible. I hope this helps.